Welcome to Smart Remarks. Come on, all you big strong men. Uncle Sam needs your help again because there's a new Hitler we have to smite, as is periodically the case. So I used to kind of like John Kerry. Here was a guy who first came to prominence as a member of uh, Vietnam Veterans Against the War, uh, protesting what he rightfully called a barbaric war, and yet here he was this past week pimping for yet another barbaric war. Uh, Kerry took the case for war against Syria to Congress this week, telling House Democrats that they faced a, quote, Munich moment because Assad sees exactly the same thing as Hitler. And, and it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Have you noticed how anytime we want to make war on someone, we first have to claim that they are Hitler? Saddam Hussein was Hitler. Gaddafi, when we wanted to remove him, was Hitler. But in this case, the Assad equals Hitler thing makes no sense whatsoever. Has Assad invaded anybody? Well, no. This is actually a civil war going on there. Does Assad aspire to regional dominance or world dominance? Well, no. This has nothing to do with that. Rather, it's all about the emotional connection that you have with the word Hitler. Hitler. If, if Assad is Hitler, well then surely we must end up the Hitler. We must do something to prevent another Munich. It's all ridiculous, but you're being sold a war, so you'll be told what you need to be told, as we said last week, that you'll line up behind the war that the elite want to fight. Uh, but, you know, we can't even get our story straight on this war, uh, uh, this proposed war. Obama has said that the supposed uh, Syrian chemical strike killed thousands of civilians, but here were the French this week saying they could only confirm that 281 people have been confirmed dead. Gee, are we willing to risk a wider war over 281 people? Uh, there's also still plenty of confusion over who exactly used the chemical weapons. Now, Kerry and the likes of John McCain have said that, well, it's unquestionably this was done by Assad's forces, but there have been reports, some Syrians have said that the rebels, uh, Saudis supplied the rebels who set off the chemical weapons themselves. And I gotta say that anytime I hear my government cite clear and compelling evidence to fight a war, I gotta think about Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction. I gotta think back to the first Gulf War. You might remember the stories of the poor innocent Kuwaiti babies ripped from the incubators and left to die on the hospital floors. A story that later turned out to be a tall tale told by a woman who was the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to the United States. You might remember that the Gulf of Tonkin incident never actually happened. Propaganda? You're soaking in it. Uh, but given our record of, of saying what needs to be said in order to get you to line up behind war, I have to ask, why would this time be any? different. There are questions about the role the Saudis might play in all this. There's questions about the role Quadar's playing in this. There's questions about a natural gas pipeline that might be at the heart of this dispute. Uh, as one blogger wrote this week, this is a strategic geopolitical conflict about natural resources, religion, and money. It has nothing to do with chemical weapons at all. But perhaps the likes of John Kerry would say, no, no, we fight merely to prevent barbaric war. We kill people with conventional weapons so that they might not kill people with unconventional weapons because our way of making them dead is superior to their way of making people dead. So don't talk about collateral damage. Don't talk about how all this could spike a war wider war. For even if that happens, any American dead and innocent Syrian dead will have died in the name of freedom and justice. Once upon a time, John Kerry and many others protested this sort of barbaric reasoning. Now Kerry has become it.